Good morning, how are you? Hope you're well. Well, if you um, follow me on social media, like on Twitter and Blue Sky and all those other sort of places, you'd know we own two EVs. One of them, right there, Mitsubishi I'm Eve, is now, um, we'll be turning 16 years old this year, and of course, in the garage here, we've our Tesla Model 3, bought um, pretty much in 2019, so the silver trim version, the early ones before Elon went sort of weirdy. Anyway, this is our Western Sydney home. And also, if you've been following me, you would know we also have this place essentially off-grid. And um, this is a quick rundown of how we get free electricity and essentially free fuel for both our cars and um, what we've done to the house. Um, the house has been for, is for sale. It is um, sold. <laughs> so now, there, the place is sort of half emptied out, so there's not much in there. But I thought now's probably a good time to show you what we've done to the house to get ourselves off-grid and um, energy independent. Up on top of there, obviously, is our um, solar panels. That is our western array. We also have an east array over here, which is uh, not as sort of organised as that side, but still makes power. So over there, we'll see we have our eastern array there. All up, we have 9.6 kilowatts total, which is more than enough. On a sunny day like today, we're making probably 7 or 8 kilowatts, which is more than enough to run everything, charger cars, and all that sort of stuff. So inside our garage, here we have, obviously we've got a Tesla wall charger there, which charges both our Model 3, and using this adapter, which is over here, we can actually charge our iMove with that as well. If we want to charge both at once, we can also charge your iMove off the standard everyday power point right there. So that solar system then feeds into two 5 kilowatt inverters. Remember we've got 9.6 total. We've got an east and west array. So up here is that. West Array, East Array. Now these have been replaced once by Solar Edge under warranty, because the other one used to have a screen telling me exactly how much. Now the solar produces the power, it goes into what we call the gateway. Now the gateway is this box here. Just, you know, it's an early one, it's one of the early systems. We've had this system for, for seven years now, believe it or not. So it's well and truly paid itself off. Now, all the solar power comes into the gateway. The gateway acts as the grid, sort of is, the, is literally the gateway between your house and the, and the grid. So with the gateway, if there's a power outage on the street, we will still make solar because the solar will then be fed into the gateway. The gateway then directs the solar back into the meter box right there. So, and then it will isolate the grid as well. So if somebody's working out here on the street, fixing power lines or whatever, you're not gonna fry them with your solar power dumping into the, into the network because the great gateway will stop that. The gateway then redirects the energy from the solar panels. It sends it into the house to use whatever the house needs to use, which is charging the cars and also running computers and cooking and all that sort of thing. Excess for the gateway then goes into our two power walls here. We have one here and the other one over here. Now, when you get these installed, you need a bollard and things in your garage, but because these brick pillars here, they come out enough distance to protect the power walls so if the car doesn't hit them, you're fine. Don't need bollards for those. Not only that, it also wasn't in the requirements when you had this. Remember, this system is seven years old, believe it or not. So, two power walls. That gives us 27 kilowatt hours of storage, which is um, plenty to run a house all night. Especially if you've got, you haven't got EVs, then those two batteries, well, you probably never have an electricity bill. And then to the new owners of this place, they will, if they don't have EVs, they're never gonna have an electricity bill. That's fantastic. So what do we do to the house? Well, firstly, LED lighting. That's a straight up given. Obviously, the amount of power drawn by one incandescent light bulb, well, 100 watts, is enough to power the whole house if you've got LEDs. So let's have a look at what we did inside. Our main bedroom, I'm not gonna show you everything in here, but obviously we've got LED lighting as well. But we also have one air conditioner up here. I think these are three kilowatts, I'm not exactly sure. Wi-Fi access point up there. So three kilowatt. And LED lighting. Bathrooms. Another thing too is these. Normally you'd have four, why would you have four? You take two bulbs out, you'd half your power bill right there. Because remember, they're, they're at 250 watts each, those lights. There's 500 watts there. You've got four of them in there. You've got a kilowatt of power being drawn, which is not really good. Obviously, we've got um, LED lighting everywhere else. That little thing, keep your house airtight. That helps a lot. So if you're cooling rooms, you don't want the cold air flowing into other warmer rooms you, no one's in or not doing anything. It'll stop airflow, which um, improves efficiency quite a lot. And it's pretty easy to do. The little things like this. See, we've got rubber seals and the doors. So yeah, we've got all those and all the doors. That helps airflow. 
Now we're nearly under him. We had the archway here between the living areas and the sleeping areas. So we had our bedrooms in there, bathrooms, showers, all that sort of thing. But we put this door in here. So we can see all the two areas off. So on those really hot 45 degree days, we can turn the air conditioning on in the bedrooms and the study in the office in there when we're working and not pump cold air into this half of the house, but also in this half of the house, once again, LED lighting, hey made, and a massive nine kilowatt system up there. And so if they're in this part of the house, watching TV with the family, having dinner, whatever else, we've got the massive solar, we've got the massive air conditioner there. We've sealed off that half of the house, so you're not wasting cold air going down there. And it just helps stop the airflow between the two parts of the house. In this area here, we also had a open fire. Now obviously open fire, big chimney going through the roof. Even when it's not in use, you help air still going up that chimney. And windy days, you can feel the air getting sucked, drawn up out there. So all the heated air we've created with the air conditioning systems, just been wasted. Not only that, they're bad for your health. The timber isn't very cheap anymore. This is our kitchen. Bit of a mess, I'll start cooking lunch in a minute. This was once a gas oven and a gas cooktop. Well, obviously gas is gone, got induction now. And of course, you can't cook properly unless you've got proper lighting. So we've got... Anyway, of course, LED lighting as well. Induction cooktop, seven zone. One, two, three, four, plus three there. This can also be turned on to here, like thirds or halves or whatever. And yes, you can use cast iron cookware on an induction cooktop, which is fantastic. Also have a 900 millimeter wide oven to match, or the usual things a modern oven does these days. But yes, no gas, all electric, runs fine off all the solar and everything else. Laundry, you know, pantry slash butler's kitchen, whatever it is these days. No dryer, we do not have a dryer. In place of a dryer, we use the latest and greatest in modern wind and solar technology. Remember these? One of the other big energy improvements we did was um, replace the hot water. We used to have solar hot water on the top here, right? Big solar panel on the roof that heats the water. That eventually started leaking and it's gonna cost a lot to replace it. And it was also gas boosted, so you have to get rid of that gas. We took that out. The gas pipe is now there. The gas company come and sealed it off, so we no longer use gas, but now we have this heat pump hot water system. We've got this very cheap second hand at an auction site. I think it cost us 400 bucks. Not bad for a um, 270 litre heat pump hot water system. Of course, it's been programmed to run from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. to hit the water using an extra solar. But we'll get to that in a minute because something happens there. There's a reason why I picked those times to run this because you can program it to whenever, whenever you want. It does a cleaning, I call, it, I call it a cleaning cook. It just boils itself to 70 degrees to kill off any bacteria in the water once a week. I have the temperature set to about 55 degrees for everyday use and it's been perfectly fine. Back in the garage now. Now I mentioned the, the time of the hot water system running to heat the hot water. There's a reason for that. We are with a company called Ovo for our electricity plan, which means between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. we get unlimited electricity for free. Now obviously you pay, you've got daily connection fee and that sort of thing, which isn't too bad in Dover. But yes, between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m., total cost for, for your electricity use is zero. So of course, what we do then is we um, plug the car in, or the LME, or both, but the best thing is these. So of course, from sunrise, the solar is generating power, it's um, feeding power into the house, excess starts going into the power walls. 11 a.m. though, the grid turns on essentially, and the power walls will charge from whatever they're at to full, off the grid for free. Of course, we're still making solar, so it's been supplemented, so it's not drawing a huge amount of power, it's not drawing a full 10 kilowatts from the grid, it's drawing whatever the solar's pumping in, the excess from the grid, and the car's taking whatever it needs. So we are pushing our single phase grid connection quite heavily, especially with um, on cloudy days, we're not making much solar, the power walls are sucking down 10 kilowatts, the car's taking seven, yeah. That circuit breaker out there earns its keep. So these normally fill up by about midday, day like today, because don't forget they've been charging all morning. And after midday, electricity is still free. So hence, the heat pump hot water service turns on, and that's when you start cooking our lunch. Now, we normally don't have big dinners. We normally cook a big lunch, because A, electricity is free. And we found if you eat a massive lunch in the middle of the day, we don't eat much at night. So yes, after 2 p.m., the power cuts off, from the grid, that is. All that is managed in the Tesla app, because you can set the charge you can set the prices in your Tesla app and your Tesla app will manage the charging of the power walls in the car based on the pricing. So obviously you set your peak at zero price. And during that period, the car will then charge, the power walls will then charge, all controlled by the um, gateway in the Tesla app, 
which is cool. That's 2 p.m. Power cuts off the grid. Batteries are full. Bright sunny day. We're still making solar. We're still exporting it. You don't get much feeding tariff for Ovo, or much in from anyone these days. So it's only like three cents. It's not much. It's not really worth exporting. So, well, batteries is probably another option, or you just, you know, charge another car. But after a while, we work from home. We work from home, so after a while, you find yourself midweek, both cars are charged. So we've got nothing to use this extra energy with. You know, people say crypto, mining, whatever, but yeah, we bother doing that. But yeah, 2 p.m., still making solar. We start exporting, and the house then starts drawing power from the batteries around sunset, as you, you know, the power turns off as it does. So, now running off battery power all night. Well, you're not running it all night, you're running until sunrise, which is all night. <laughs> but we have also have enough storage in here to run the house past sunrise if it's a really cloudy, rainy, crappy day or somebody paints the solar panels black or takes them off the roof completely. We've still got enough battery power to run us to 11 o'clock in the morning for the free grid connection to turn on and start charging everything for free once again. So that is essentially how we have um, removed all our fuel bills and removed our energy costs and done, it's not a passive house obviously, but this house is a late early 90s build, so that's never going to happen. It's got air leaks everywhere, but yeah, we tried our best, seal the doors up, make it energy as efficient as possible, got rid of our gas because that A is expensive and B it's bad for you and bad for the environment. It's just, gas is crap. Not only that, induction cooking is just so, so, so much better, so much more control. Because your actual cookware itself is the heating element essentially, so you're not wasting heat, burning gas, filling your kitchen full of hot gas fumes. So that is a quick rundown of our home. We've tried to make it as energy efficient as possible, how we got ourselves off gas, 100% electric, 100% renewable powered, because you can also option to buy your electricity for renewable sources. But overall, our electricity bills are pretty much zero, our fuel bill is zero, and to the lucky new owner of this place, they will have um, no energy costs whatsoever. So, we've got this far, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you again in the next video.